See that? That's a Joshua tree. I filmed them many times before on my channel, but I never get tired of looking at them. They don't look from far away, and even up close, they kind of look soft and fluffy, especially from far away. But let me tell you something, I've ran head first into one to test it out, and they hurt. They're really hard. Especially those parts. That really hurts if you run head first into it. I don't recommend it. You end up smelling burned waffles for the rest of your life. So here I am at the Joshua Tree Inn in 29 Palms, California. Uh, I've seen 28 palms so far. I'm still searching for the 29th. And look, I just got something stuck in my finger from that tree. See, they're dangerous. Now I'm here because this is the spot where Graham Parsons overdosed and died. Now, if you don't know who Graham Parsons is, I'm gonna tell you a few stories about Graham Parsons just from memory and about my connect, well, my personal connection to Graham Parsons and about his life. This is where he died. I can talk a lot about Graham Parsons and I talk a lot about him to my friends. I tell stories that I know about him and the most famous story about his death. And he really means a lot to me. As a musician, as an artist, he's just, he's right up there with some of my favorites. He has been for a long time. If you don't know who Graham Parsons is, check him out after you watch the video. Check out his music. Brilliant, brilliant singer-songwriter. Okay, let's go take a look at the memorial now. out here as you can see and leave lots of stuff for Graham safe at home this slab was out at the spot where his body was cremated and was brought here so and then they put this memorial up here for him at the little motel grievous angel that's one of his most famous songs there's another grievous angel right there. If you don't know the song, Grie uh, Return of the Grievous Angel, make that the first song you listen to. Because it's great. It's one of my favorite songs. Now I'm going to show you the room where he passed away. It's room eight right behind me. There's nobody here on the property. There's absolutely nobody answering the door. There's nobody staying here. There's a couple of workers on the, on the, working on the pool, but no one's here. It's very bizarre. So right behind that door is where Graham Parsons passed away. And people stay here and they write stuff on the walls. And people come from all over the world just to see this motel, just to see this memorial and to stay in this room maybe stay in a room adjacent to it if they're a little freaked out by staying in a room where someone passed away. I wouldn't be. I'm just passing through though. Are we all just passing through? Look at that, I guess that's the original door and a chair from the room. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it looks like that's the original door. I didn't even notice that. Last time I was here, I did not notice this. Wow. So when I was here, well, let me tell you how I came to know about Graham Parsons. Uh, my friend Jory, John and I used to go up to Jory's cottage all the time and we're all music lovers. Jory's an incredible musician. I play his music on some of my videos. Uh, he's so talented and he know he's really into like folk and 
alt country stuff like that, which I'm into as well, but not as much as him. Do I do I know some of the older bands? Uh, he's definitely not into hip hop that I'm into, and uh, some of the more poppy stuff. But we we do have a lot of the same similar music tastes as well. Peace, Jory. I love you, man. Uh, but we were up at his cottage and we were playing different music for each other. This is a long time ago. And uh, he goes, okay, I'm going to play you something by the Flying Burrito Brothers. And I said, yeah, okay, sure you are. What? what? And he's like, Flying Burrito Brothers. You never heard of them? I'm going to play you something by them. You'll like it. I'm like, what are they, like Weird Al type of thing? I'm like, come on. Are we still listening to Weird Al these days? I was. And he goes, no, no, no. A guy named Graham Parsons was in the band. He's an amazing musician. You are gonna love it. And I said, okay. So I'm gonna stuff it, it's owl. Let's try to bite you. If you can see, right there. It's part of the Joshua tree stuck in my, stuck in my hand. But part of the Joshua tree is also stuck right in here. Now, what was I saying? So we put on the Flying Burrito Brothers and instantly with the first twang of that guitar, I fell in love with the music and started reading all about Graham Parsons and got to know him. And I came home and I told my father and my father's like, I've been trying to get you to listen to Graham Parsons for years. And I said, I said what? No, you haven't. And he said, yeah, yeah, I have. My father really liked country and stuff like that. And I said, well, I love him. He goes, well, that's about time. It's about time. So that was another thing that my father and I uh, bonded over was um, Graham Parsons. Excuse me. Gotta, gotta fix that pool. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, yeah, so we really bonded over uh, Graham Parsons and I don't think uh, by that age I went on any more road trips with my father. But I wish I had, you know, I, I wish I had so we could have listened to them so we could have listened to Graham Parsons together and had something else to talk about. Yeah, I mean, my father really loved music, movies, TV, and I know that's where I got it from, where I got my love of pop culture. So there's lots that remind me of, There's lots that remind me of him after, since he's passed away. Uh, sorry, I should add it. I should stop. You know what? I can. There's lots that remind me of him, and uh, I know he would love to come out here with me. And I'm, I wish he would turn that thing off, dude. <laughs> I, I wish he could, he loved road trips, and I wish he could be out here with me because he would love to see this. But he's here in spirit, right? So is Graham right behind the store, and here and there and everywhere. But this is about Graham Parsons, and I was actually out here um, three or four years ago, about three years ago. And there was a father with a young boy, and the young boy was picking up a guitar that was left here by the memorial. And the father was just whispering to him gently, and the boy was strumming the guitar with had like two strings on it. And it got to me, because that was about six months after my father passed away. And it really got to me then, and it just all of a sudden got to me again now. But, okay. It was right here where they were, where this memorial is. This is a beautiful spot. <sighs> I'm gonna drive out to Cap Rock now because where Cap Rock is, that's close, pretty much the spot 
where Graham Parsons' body was taken and cremated in a really crazy story. He died here of a barbiturate opiate, op you know, overdose heroin, like a lot of rock stars sadly do right here. Just after he finished an album, I believe, and he came here and he, and he drank for days, had a couple of bars, kept going back to the room, and eventually he passed away here. And his body was taken from here and taken to LAX airport. So, here, let me show you one thing. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty with all the cacti? Give you a little more perspective of what this little hotel looks like. Motel. Sorry if you've come here for uh, Grand Par Well, this is about Grand Parsons, but it's too personal for you. If you're looking for more of something, hey, you can read a lot about Grand Parsons. You can see a lot of videos about Grand Parsons online if that's what you're looking for. I hope you're still watching this though. But his body was taken to LAX. But he had made a deal with, uh, I believe it was his road manager, last name Kaufman. What was the first name? Well, he made a deal with his manager that he didn't want to be buried. They went to the funeral of a friend earlier and he said, I don't want that to happen to me. And they made a deal with each other that they would be cremated out in Joshua Tree, out in the park. That's where he wanted to be. So the manager and one of his buddies Borrowed, borrowed a hearse, went to LAX, pretended to be from a uh, funeral home, said that plans had changed, that Grand Parsons' body was not being shipped back uh, to the south where he was from. He had to be, he was flying, out, they were gonna be flying out of uh, Van Nuys Airport or Santa Barbara Airport, I think it was Van Nuys. Anyways, the guy at the airport believed them, so they got Graham's body, and as they were leaving, they drove into a wall. The hearse. There's a movie made about this and it's pretty good. Um, they drove into a wall and the cop that was there just laughed off and said, yeah, keep going, because he didn't, they just thought that, yeah, well, it makes sense, the hearse is here. And they drove out to Cap Rock, and now we're gonna drive out to Cap Rock together. I'm gonna show you where it happened. I'm gonna try to find something specific there. I don't know if I can find it. It's an exact rock that was beside the casket that was on fire. story gets weird and gets even weirder a little bit. I tell this story to all my friends who don't know it when we go on road trips. I love talking about it because it's just such a crazy story and I'll play some Graham Parsons for them. It's a lot of fun. It wasn't, it was a fun story in retrospect. The time it was pretty scandalous but in the spirit of Graham Parsons he was a crazy mother of and I think he would appreciate in death what happened. Right? Hmm. Take a look at the sky. All right, let's drive out to Cap Rock together. You coming with me? It's a bit of a drive. We can do it. Look at this thing. Quiet, quiet, peaceful little place. If I haven't stressed enough, listen to some Graham Parsons after this. Try them out, you'll like them. He was good friends, I believe, with Emmylou Harris, who's another great singer, who's still going to this day. Beautiful, beautiful woman, beautiful singer. Look at this guy. Oh, won't you scratch my itch, sweet Annie Rich? Welcome me back to town. Come out on your porch, we'll step into your parlor. I'll tell you how it all went down. Out with the truckers, the kickers, and the cowboy angels. And a good saloon in every single town. Oh, and I'll remember something you once told me 
And I'll be damned if it did not come true. 20,000 roads I went down, down, down. They all led me straight back home to you. That's Grievous Angel, Return of the Grievous Angel by Graham. I'm not a singer. That could be cringe-worthy. That was probably cringe-inducing. But I love that song, and I sing all the time, I, especially when I'm driving. And I'm singing everywhere I go. And it doesn't matter if I can't sing. Everybody should sing. And if, if, if you think you can't sing, you know what? You probably can sing. Just sing in your own key. That's what I always tell people. Sing in, don't try to imitate the singer. Sing in your own key. Everybody can speak, right? If you can talk, most people, if you can talk, you can sing. Give it a try. Don't be afraid. Just sing. All right. Let's go to Cap Rock. Boom. This is a beautiful little motel. Yes, indeed. It's beautiful. And they all led me straight back home to you. Are you a trucker? Are you a kicker? Or are you a cowboy angel? What am I? I don't know what I am. A little bit trucker. Big time kicker. Hope to be a cowboy angel. I don't know. What are you? Everybody's something. Everybody's one of those three things. Right? Well, I wasn't expecting a lineup to get into the park. This is Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, $80 for an annual pass and get into all parks uh, across the country or $30 just for a single. I'm trying to think of what I should do because God, I probably will be back in a national park at some point. But I don't know when. I know where my next uh, big road trip will be. I don't think there's any... Oh, yeah, there is a national park. Hmm. Ah. You know what? I'm just going to pay for the single day thing. <sighs> this has nothing to do with Grand Parsons, but this is the way in towards Cap Rock, where Grand Parsons was cremated. And there's a bit of a wait. Joshua Tree is gorgeous. Look at it. My God. And if you're thinking about the album Joshua Tree by U2, yes, it was named after this exact tree. And that exact tree, I've done a video on before on my channel, the exact tree from the U2 album. And there's a new one coming very, very soon based on that tree and around U2. So watch for that if you're a U2 fan. And if you're not a U2 fan, you should be, because they're the greatest rock and roll band of all time. Hi, I like your Equinox. What is happening up here? Like, it's like someone's bartering about the price. Pay the price, go in. Dude, you're stressing me out. There's somebody from Colorado right in front of me. Don't you have a national park in Colorado you can go to? I'm kidding, I love Colorado. Big ups to Colorado. I'm getting really stressed out. It's cutting into my time. Interagency senior. Ooh, that's cheaper. I don't know what that means. Can I say I'm an interagency senior? For $15 to walk in or to bicycle. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. Oh, come on. Still waiting, still waiting. You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to get an annual pass or just get a day pass. Because national parks are very expensive. 
But if you want to walk around one, you got to pay the freaking price. <sighs> That's Kenny. It's not Graham. But I was just listening to some Kenny. Mm. This dude from Colorado is really chatty. Super chatty. Totally oblivious to anyone behind him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a particularly sunny day. It certainly is. Oh, I'm from Denver. Oh, really? I have friends in Boulder. Doesn't matter. There's people behind you. Oh, here I am. Look at you. Look at the hat. <laughs> Amazing. Are you doing the $30 pass? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, I can't fly a drone, right? Correct. I don't have one. Good. What about a kite? No. I've never flown a kite in my life. I didn't until I was like 21. I wouldn't even know how. Yeah. <laughs> so the receipt goes on the left side of your window. Uh -huh. It's good for seven days. Six on the glass, yellow side out. Oh. And look. I've got a map for you. Ooh, swag. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye. Oh, I can see why he chatted with her. She was adorable. She's the type of person I could probably talk to for hours. You know what? I'm turning around. I'm going to talk to her and take up space in the line. Let's go see Cap Rock. shirt on my back said if I had a shirt on my back you know what I would do I'd give a shirt to you to keep you from the cold and snow where Graham Parsons was cremated illegally. I just thought, passed a place called Intersection Rock and I thought, when I reform a band someday, we're gonna do Intersection Rock. That's the type of music we're gonna do. People ask, yo man, yo, what kind of music your band do? I'm gonna say, uh, Intersection Rock. Oh really, what kind of music is that? Oh, you know, it's like, uh, it's like psychedelica meets acid house meets aqua fitness, that sort of thing. Yeah, intersection rock. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, can't wait to hear your band. I love your band. Hmm. So here I am. I've made it to Cap Rock, and I assume that why it's called Cap Rock because there's that rock balancing precariously now there's stories that when the band manager uh, Grant Parsons best friend came out here that he stopped here and cremated Graham there's other stories that it was somewhere out there most people come here and there's gonna be graffiti somewhere around here I'm gonna find but most people assume it was right beside the rock. There's alternating stories. He was drunk when he when they were driving. And uh, I assume on a few other things too. So he doesn't remember the exact spot, he said. And but this is the general area, and it's where people come to memorialize Graham Parsons. They set the casket on fire with gasoline. Uh, gave him a little, whispered something to him. I think he gave him a tweak on the nose. Lit him up. The flames went up really high. I mean, gasoline, when it burns, it's from black fumes of smoke. 
fumes, fumes, big bursts of smoke. And people far away saw it that were on these little roads here. They saw the, and they, they got the heck out right away. And when the police and the fire department came, the body hadn't fully burned and it was still 35, it wasn't ashes, it was 35 pounds left. And there was uh, something from the coroner's bag, I think was there, or something to do with that. They got out of the coroner's bag or something to do with the, the funeral home. So that was their first clue of who did it. And I think they traced it back to the funeral home and they figured out, and there was eyewitnesses that saw the band manager and stuff leave. <laughs> Uh, Cause they got stopped by the police. They got busted in jail for drinking and driving. They got in a little accident. Pretty crazy stuff on the way back after burning the body. So they got caught, but they didn't, they uh, got a six month probation, I believe something like that. They had to pay a fine. Back then stealing a human corpse. I don't know what the, I don't know what the charge is now, but back then stealing a human corpse, there wasn't really much uh, they did. I think people are gonna like climb, like they've got like mountain climbing equipment. People lead different lives than I do. Like, I have a video that I'll probably put up someday of me climbing around Vasquez rocks. Scott. 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 Sorry about that. Did you hear that? Someone's calling my name. I just, this stupid pocket on my jacket, everything falls out. <laughs> he was calling my name, Scott, Scott. Yeah, and everything fell out of my pocket and my credit cards and my driver's license. Where was I? What a nice guy. Thank you. I thanked him a lot. Oh, I'm an idiot. Good Lord. When I shave, I think I shave right into my brain. Okay, let's find the memorial to Graham Parsons where people write the stuff. I don't want to get a look at these mountain climbers. Like I was saying, people lead a different life than me. I don't, uh, I'm not mountain climbing. Yeah, a video of me at Vasquez Rocks where I'm climbing up really high and that was fun. This is a little too precarious for me. You won't catch me mountain climbing. No, sir. See, I think they're climbing. It's a little chilly out here. And they brought peanut butter. That's a good thing to bring to the desert. That doesn't make your mouth dry. Oh, goodness. All right, look at these things. Let's find where people write the stuff about Graham Parsons. It's around here somewhere. So yeah, I don't know. I, I tend to think that he wasn't cremated right by the rock. But there was one rock that when there's a coroner's photo and stuff like that that I haven't seen, but I've read about it online. And there was one rock that was pictured beside it, like a small rock. And that rock is still here somewhere. And that's what I was, I was gonna try to find. I think it's gonna be impossible. We'll see. But let's find uh, the graffiti first for Graham. It's written out here. So he's probably bur he, was, he was cremated somewhere right around here or a little further out. I think it was right here or some, you know, who knows? Information lost to time and alcohol induced uh, fugues. Oh, it's chilly. Yeah. So people that say that the desert is really warm, do people say that? I don't know if they say that. They're crazy because it's actually really cold right now. It's cold. It's the middle of the afternoon and it's cold. Come on. I, I've been in the desert before when it's 129 degrees. That was in August. I was in Death Valley. I pulled my leg that way. And my God, I couldn't walk more than four minutes. My friend was making fun of me because I was just like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I was kvetching. I was doing a lot of kvetching. And then a group of senior citizens got off a tour bus and walked way up this ramp to this overlook. They did it no problem. 
<sighs> I'm in good shape, but I just, I, it, 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 I'm walking in the heat. Ah, it's killing me. Sorry, oh my God, it's like a Jawa watching me. This guy just popped up out of nowhere. Okay, where is the graffiti for Graham? I'm walking around and around and around. <sighs> Look at them crazy folk. What are they doing? Spot. Right around here. That's what the park ranger told me. I had to go and ask. And it looks like it's all been sandblasted off the graffiti, which they do. Here's a cross here. You can still see a little bit left here. But yeah, you can see a few places where people have written stuff, but it's all gone. And he said to me, you're looking for a place where a famous musician uh, had an incident? And I said, yes. And he gave me the exact directions, pointed me here. And he goes, yeah, unfortunately people write on it and we sandblast it. And I said, I've got no pens or markers on me whatsoever, or spray paint. And I wouldn't do that. And he goes, oh, no, I, we don't, we, we, we don't really, uh, we don't put up markers for it, but we tell people where it is if they want to see it, which is nice. Really nice guy. Sorry, it's so windy. Oh yeah, this is the spot. Somewhere in this general area where Grand Parsons was cremated. Listen to some Grand Parsons. It'll make your life a little bit better. If it's not better already, I hope it is. It'll make your thoughts a little, little clearer. It'll make your day a little bit brighter. Looks something like one of these. Where the body and the casket was. Look at one of these rocks. Was it this one? I don't know, but it certainly resembles it. Well, the wind has subsided, so it looks like I can talk a little bit. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video about Grant Parsons and my little journey here out into the desert. Hope you enjoyed coming along with me. Yeah, oh, some more graffiti here. I don't know, just looks like moss. But yeah, it was fun. We had some laughs. We had some tears. Unfortunately, whoa, we had no beers. But I do have a cotton candy zero energy monster. Is it, I don't know, it's what brand it is. Hey, I shouldn't give a shout out to brands anyways. They're not paying me. Waiting for me in the car, for me to make it to my next journey. Cotton candy flavored energy drink? Hmm, well, we'll see. Oh, there's that wind again. <sighs> Thank you for watching. I love you all. Peace to you all. I hope you're curled up warm somewhere because it's freezing here. Enjoy the rest of your day or night, whatever time you're watching this. And watch for my next video. It'll be coming soon. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope everything's cool with you. Everything's cool with me. I'm going somewhere else. Now it's time for me to say peace. <clears throat> Out. Cap Rock. There he is. There you are. I'm gonna climb up to you. I wanna climb right up to Cap Rock. No, I don't. No, I don't. Oh my God. Oh my God.
Please do not put trash in toilets. It is extremely difficult to remove. Thank you. That is a life lesson. I don't know what, but, but putting trash in toilets, extremely difficult to remove. It's not just speaking about the toilet. That's, that's life right there. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Oh, God.